Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold The sea is calm tonight, the tide is full, the moon lies fair upon the straits, on the French coast the light gleams and is gone, the cliffs of England stand, glimmering and vast, out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Only from the long line of spray, where the sea meets the moon-blanched land, listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles, which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease, and then again begin, with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound of thought hearing it by this distant northern sea the sea of faith was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now I only hear its melancholy, long withdrawing roar retreating to the beach. Of the night wind down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. Ah! Love, let us be true to one another, for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy nor love nor light, nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain. And we are here, as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. OK, this poem was written by Matthew Arnold in Victorian times. I think it's probably about 1860, but I might be wrong. Let's see, what are the themes in this? Well, I think one of the themes is um, the disappearance of faith, the disappearance of belief in God. And then I think another one of the themes is the strength of nature and the enormous time spans that are, are involved in natural processes and how insignificant we mere mortals are who only live a short time um, within all of this. And... Um, I think he, it's also saying that he feels sad about this lack of faith and this um, lack of joining with our environment. I think he's saying we are part of our environment, but man is tending to understand that less and less. So let's see. The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. So he's clearly looking out towards the beach of Dover and you have the Straits of Dover and the tide is up and the sea is calm and uh, the, there is a moon which you can see clearly. On the French coast the light gleams and is gone. So from Dover you can just see France. You can't see it very well. And so there's a gleam. Here to me this is um, maybe a glimmer of the faith that is left. Or maybe it's also lo looking and a hope for the future. But then it disappears. The cliffs of England sand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. So he's looking at the white cliffs of Dover and they are enormous and they're impressive and imposing. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. So how beautiful nature is, the air is wonderful. Only from a long line of spray where the sea meets the moon-blanched land. Listen. Okay, so... Um, 
what he can see are the cliffs and the spray of the waves beating against the cliff where the sea meets the land and the white cliffs of Dover are made of uh, chalk and so they're white and they they're blanched to blanch to make white um to so it's ref the light is reflected on them so the impressiveness of nature again you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up on the high strand okay so the waves pick up pebbles stones and you hear them rubbing together they're grating together and this is a typical sound in that in that area i've heard it particularly near deal which is a few miles up um and i think here this is um echoing the frightening um state the, the frightening power of nature and that nature doesn't really care about man man is of no interest our petty worries and the things that we worry about these are of no consequence to nature and it takes a stone and it throws it back up the shore yeah um, so they draw back the stones and then fling high up onto the strand, high up onto the piece of beach. Begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence, slow. OK, so this has the idea of relentlessness, the relentless movement of time as well, and the cadence, the rhythm, this slow rhythm of the waves pulling back the rocks and the sea and throwing them again. And bring the eternal note of sadness in. Okay, so here he's looking at all this and he's thinking sadly about how insignificant man is in all of this um, panorama. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. So he's now saying that Sophocles saw this and uh, that, that's why Sophocles wrote tragedies because he, um, watching the sea and the waves dashing, it brought into his mind the turbid, the cloudy, going back and coming forwards of human misery, the movement of human misery, and that nature really doesn't care. We find also in the sound of a thought, hearing it by this in distant, hearing it by this distant northern sea. So um, I think he's saying that this sound echoes in his mind the thoughts of, of uh, his existence and our position in nature. The sea of faith was once too at the full. Okay, so the sea of faith, everybody believed in God, but that's no longer true. And round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. Okay, so a girdle goes round you to keep into your stomach and to furl, to wrap round. So faith was wrapped round the earth. It was everywhere in the same sea, that, in the same way that the sea is wrapped around the earth as well. But now I only hear its melancholy, long withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. OK, but now he only hears a sad, a melancholy, withdrawing roar, the roar when the sea comes out pulling these stones. Yeah, and I think that's saying, um, again, echoing the loss of faith. Yeah, um, retreating. So the, the sea is retreating and so is faith. So is man's belief and man's interaction or respect for nature. I hear its long withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of naked night. So the roar, when the, the sea goes out completely, then there's silence for a second before it comes back in again. And I can only hear that sound. Yeah? 
Um, so the winds, um, it's, it, the only thing that he can hear is the winds that bl are blowing down the enormous, dreary, boring, lifeless edges and naked shingles and naked stones of the world. So I think he's saying as faith disappears, then there is an empty, dreary wind that blows round the world and that echoes his feeling. And then he changes again. Ah, love, let us be true to one another. So he's now thinking about love. And one of the things that we can do about this insignificance in space and time or this tiny uh, part or the fact that another that nature doesn't care is we need to love each other we need to be true to each other for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so various so beautiful so new hath really neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain so he's, he's looking at the world and he's saying this fantastic, beautiful new world is a wonderful place. But the one thing that is there is no certainty. You can't be certain of anything. Yeah, um, anything can happen. And here this is echoing man's search for a meaning, for the meaning of life in a world where everything is uncertain and nothing can be certain. So there's clearly a, di a dichotomy between these two things. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight. So here we are thinking about these things and there are shouts of different things and different things catch our attention and people are struggling for um, position. And then uh, and there are armies of ignorance, huge groups of, of ignorant people who are fighting by night. So he's here again talking, saying that it's very difficult to find our place to understand our position or our significance in this world where all sorts of things are happening and clamouring for our attention. So enough, that was Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold.